This edition of Behind the Action is brought to you by Vite Ramen. The instant ramen with 27 grams of complete protein, vitamins, and minerals to keep you playing at your best. Learn more at the end of the video. The current triple tank, triple support meta, or GOATS, has been around for almost a year now. Teams across the world have attempted to find new compositions to counter it, but few have found consistent success at the highest level of play. That is, until now. Element Mystic, or EM, is one of the best teams in Contenders Korea, and recently won their first ever Contenders Championship while running a strange composition in the finals. The composition, commonly called Sombra Doomfist or Hackfist, comprises of Reinhardt, Zarya, Sombra, Doomfist, Lucio, and Anna. While the composition is certainly not new, having been used by Team Canada and Team USA in the Overwatch World Cup in 2018, this is the first time it has ever been used so successfully in Contenders. Maintained doesn't really result in all of anything. Space Jam's oh, gonna come down brutal. though. Sparkle with a double kill. It's all over. <laughs> Part of the reason for its success is Element Mystic having Sparkle, the best Doomfist in Korea, and Doha, the best Sombra in Korea, on their roster. And the other part is great synergy and awareness of how to use this composition. Doha could just run in with an EMP, he does manage to get at least one, Proper is gonna get almost destroyed, although the rest of the team were able to just back him up. Alpha and Pelican end up trading as Proper, actually Myungbong are dead as well. Element <laughs> Mystic just cleaning house so, so quickly, especially with Sparkly in the backline who got himself a triple kill. So how does the comp work? When you look at this composition, one thing that jumps out is the number of heroes that can synergize with Doomfist. A Sombra hack or Reinhardt fire strike on a squishy can allow him to follow up with a Zarya bubble to protect him while he goes in. Or perhaps your Ana hits a great bionade, or she gives you a nano boost to make him even more deadly. Furthermore, in the GOATS meta, where the first pick is so important and often determines who wins a fight, Doomfist's ability to one-shot any of the squishies is worth huge value. However, Playing this against GOATS also means that there are a lot of abilities that can counter Doom. A Zarya Bubble can protect the target, a Diva Matrix the follow-up shots, and he can be hit with CC abilities such as Anna's Sleep Dart and Brigitte's Shield Bash. Both Brigitte and Reinhardt can also counter charge into Doomfist, knocking him to the ground and making him an easy target for the rest of the team. It also means that you are unable to counter the powerful abilities in GOATS, such as having no D.Va to eat enemy Graviton Surges and Ana Bionades. The lack of Brigitte also means a switch to Ana or Moira to keep your Reinhardt alive, which means less damage from the back line and no Discord Orb from Zen. Therefore, your Sombra and Doomfist need to be putting out very high amounts of damage to make up for this, or getting value from insta-kills. How exactly does Doomfist get value? The first way to get value with Doomfist is by displacing the opposing Reinhardt. Reinhardt's shield and mind games are extremely important in GOATS. However, with Doomfist, it is rather easy to just knock the Reinhardt into the air for a shatter, or stun him with rocket punch. You can also punch Ryan towards your team to get him out of position, and allow your team to focus him down quickly. If nothing else, the sheer amount of pressure will force the enemy team to fall back, allowing you to easily take space. Secondly, following up on others, Reinhardt fire strikes, Ana Bionades, and Sombra Hacks are all good reasons to go in. In the mid fight, and when it is safe, Sparkle will look to rocket punch one of the squishies to instantly take them out of the fight. The Nano ends up finding three kills. How do you Somebody deal with stop this? this man? How do you do it? O2 <laughs> Blast end up falling over, and Element Mystic, once again, off the back of an EMP from Doha, which has built up so fast, end up securing the point. So, how does Sombra get value then? 
playing like traditional Sombra goats. Hack targets, build EMP, win fights with one ultimate. Otherwise, Sombra can combo EMP with different things. Hack Reinhardt for Shatter, hack Diva for Grav, etc. Sombra is also good at hacking targets for Doom to follow up on. And if the enemy team switches off Zenyatta, your EMP becomes a crucial mind game between yourself and the enemy Lucio with his sound barrier, but we'll get more into that later. The team essentially operates as a group of two and another group of four. The tanks and supports protect each other, following up on any opportunities that Sombra and Doomfist create. The Doomfist can go for quick one-shots with Rocket Punch before returning to his team with Seismic Slam. The attention that Doomfist draws also allows Sombra to get a hack off undetected, putting more pressure on the enemy team and making them even more uncomfortable. However, this team comp can also be used in more creative ways. Let's take a look at the Element Mystic's attack of Point C on Blizzard World in the Korean Contenders Grand Final against O2 Blast. Element Mystic have just capped Point B and are setting up to take Point C. O2 is playing Sombra Goats against EM's Hackfist composition. O2 Sombra, Krong, has built up an EMP in the last fight and is looking to use it right as the payload rounds a corner so that O2 will have good position to defend and at least two fights before the payload gets to C, which will allow them to take more time off the time bank. As we can see, Krong runs in, EMP's three members of Element Mystic, and the follow-up is swift. Notice, however, that EM did not invest any ultimates into countering this. Their only counter to EMP is Sound Barrier, which they did not have, and with their spawn being so close, they elected to lose the fight to the EMP in order to give themselves a massive ultimate advantage in the next one. Indeed, in the very next fight, we see Doha running off into the enemy back line. Given that EM is coming up on four ultimates, we would expect to see some kind of substantial investment. Most teams would go for a combo like Graviton Surge and Meteor Strike, also known as Space Jam, and save the EMP for the final fight. Or we might see it the other way around, the EMP first and then the Space Jam later on. Instead, EM do neither. Their only investment? A nano boost on Sparkle's Doomfist. So why didn't they invest more? Well, as the fight plays out, we see that Kaiser's positioning is very strange. He's ahead of his team, with the Brigitte unable to stun anyone coming for him, and the Zarya bubble is given early on and melted through almost instantly. Kaiser attempts to get around Alpha's shield and shatter, but his team is in no position to follow up, and Alpha blocks it anyway. This leaves Kaiser extremely vulnerable, and when Sparkle one-shots Pelican with a rocket punch to the face, both teams know the fight is done, and there's no need for EM to invest anything. It's now potentially the final fight of the map, and this is the point where you begin to think, ah, so this is where EM uses their EMP and grab and Meteor Strike, right? Well, yes but not in the way you might imagine. Again, we see EM setting up, with Doha looking for somewhere to throw his translocator in and EMP. Undine lands a great sleep onto Proper, and as Kaiser moves over to shield him, Hanbin takes advantage to catch them both in the grab. So maybe this is the time to use the EMP, yet Doha still holds onto it, because Sparkle's meter strike coupled with the damage from the rest of the team is enough to take down Proper. And you'll notice something else. Mandu did not use Sand Barrier to save his tank. Now we see the genius of Doha holding his EMP. Knowing full well that Doha has his EMP, Mandu wants to use Sand Barrier to save his team from it. But with Myunbong having swapped to Ana instead of Zenyatta, there is no other support ultimate on the field that can deal with the Graviton Surge. So when Hanbin uses his Grav, Mandu does not use Barrier as Doha can wipe it away with EMP. This causes proper to fall and when Doha finally EMPs, it's for the sole purpose of taking down Kaiser quickly, preventing Myunbong from building and using Nano Boost on him to stall the fight further. The fight is won, and Sparkle cleans up in typical Sparkle fashion, getting six kills to finish the map. On the payload, it's not gonna happen though. A Doomfist comes in from Pelican, but it gets instantly checked by Sparkle, who picks up a kill onto Proper as well. Doha, he's living in Mandu's head. Kills. Three and Sparkle. Oh boy, he's glistening. <laughs> Four kill. Man, what in the world? I've missed Sparkle's Doomfist. I don't know about you guys. Another interesting thing we see Element Mystic do is put enormous amounts of resources into their Sombra and Doomfist, instead of on Reinhardt like you would usually see in Goats. For example, take a look at this short sequence. Saved O2 Blast. 
Oh, that's, that's not great. Doha, Doha not where he wanted to be, really. And now he has to go translocate to get out. Does receive armor pack and a shield, though. And it eventually falls. That is exa not exactly where he wanted to go. And now O2 Blast actually secure a tick. On O2 Blast's overtime attack round, EM are defending with a more traditional somber goats to instantly wipe out O2's push once they have built up EMP. Doha makes a bad translocation and falls into the enemy team. He is instantly stunned by the enemy Brigitte. The Brigitte calls for his team to follow up on the stun, and they chase Doha, but he receives first the Zarya bubble from Sparkle, then the repair pack from Hanbin. Notice also how Hanbin attempts to protect Doha by shield bashing proper, while Unique also makes his way over to help. Doha still ends up going down, but it clearly shows where EM's priorities are. They would rather have the EMP faster by sacrificing their cooldown to allow Doha to survive, than sacrifice him and allow the rest of the team to survive, knowing they cannot possibly outdamage O2 in a brawl. As we saw before, EM likes to give Sparkle a nano boost, which entirely makes sense because his ultimate is not affected very greatly by nano boost, and it synergizes better with Graviton Surge. Thus, EM's ult rotation is EMP plus nano boosted Doomfist and then Grav plus Meteor Strike for the next fight. This creates a nice cycle, allowing EM to easily snowball a single EMP into a full map completion. Here's one last example of this. Doha and Undine both have their ultimates online, so they use them together, nano boosting Sparkle to follow up on the EMP. In the process, Hanbin and Sparkle are able to build their ultimates, and EM does not miss a step in the next fight. I think so, Doomfist is gonna slam straight on top of the heads, Prophet, they're all dead. I'm not even going to say it. Element Mystic, they've wiped O2 Blast. So, what do you think of this composition? Is it something you would like to try out? Or is it even worse than Goats, considering both Sombra and Doomfist render you unable to play the game? Let us know in the comments below, and leave a like if you enjoyed this episode and want to see more. And now, a message from our sponsors. Vite Ramen started as a dream by twin brothers to play better with better nutrition. Now, they're a small team making the world's first nutritionally complete instant ramen, loaded with tons of protein, vitamins, and minerals to keep you feeling and playing at your best. All for less than the cost of a fast food meal. Use our code ACTION10 at checkout for 10% off your purchase. Check out the link in the description below.